here's how to coach a team of beginners. Um, whether it's youth kids, maybe you're a high school, you might have a high school team of 80 kids and you know, 50 of them have 10 years of experience, but what about the other 30? Most of us are middle school or youth coaches uh, who have a lot of the beginners and probably half of our high school coaches have a lot of beginners too. The main thing is we like to under teach over drill. You know, it's like Bruce Lee says, I'm not afraid of the man with 10,000 kicks. I'm afraid of the man has one done one kick 10,000 times. So we, we call it under teach over drill. We like to keep it core. We call it foundation. Our system's called foundation wrestling. It's trademarked. Kids all over the nation has, have used it. Um, Stefan Mishik, uh, I talked to him at the NCAs. He grew up on it since he was nine. He's a world medalist and, uh, uh, you know, he's ranked number two in the nation in college now. Um, the Lee boys are all, all at Penn State. They used to actually drive about seven hours round trip to train with us. I used to do some privates with them on occasion. They used to come to our camps every year, but they grew up on our DVD series as well. Um, there's been quite a few. Colton Schultz, uh, he may wrestle in college. He may just go to the Olympic Training Center. Uh, his dad, Rick, uh, his boys were homeschooled and they drilled our system about four hours a day. Um, probably not for everybody, but you know, it worked for Colton. So uh, the Olympic Training Center is fighting over him right now and he's still in high school. So um, and, and they were on our system from the time they were seven to 18. And we used to do camps out there in Cherry Creek, Colorado for the Schultz boys. They've been to our camps many times. And you know, the main thing is they have a system that all these people actually followed it. Just like the uh, 18 uh, Division One wrestlers we had last year on the mats competing at the NCAA Division One tournament, uh, you know, they were in our program and they followed it. You know, uh, four to 10 years they were in our program, week after week after week, uh, following a system, right? And that's the main thing. And you don't have to use our system. You can come up with your own, certainly. But here's my advice to this uh, uh, this coach who is, he has our system, he's just kind of maybe struggling a little bit. So what I, we have the index card approach. So what we do is, you know, we have our, our basic series, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase three, forget about it, uh, mostly. The beginners, you have to, um, get the kids the core techniques of wrestling, obviously. They have to know how to do a half Nelson. They have to know how to sprawl. What's referee's position? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to just puke out all of this information. Get it done, right? Within two days, get it all done. When I was a high school coach 20 years ago, I divided up my team in like six sections and I had all the beginners and I had them in groups and they'd rotate 15 minutes and I'd have, um, you know, Nathan teaching the kids a half Nelson, and then John was teaching them how to do a stance and penetration step and a sprawl. And it, they weren't expert coaches. Who cares? We just had to get something done because I could not take the first month of season to deal with these new kids. They were kind of a thorn in my side, but I had to have them, right? So I used that approach, and we had a good practice. The assistant coach got those guys live wrestling, then I could have a, a, a pretty good drill. 20, 30 minute drill session with my uh, varsity or advanced kids and then get them going live wrestling. And so we kind of use them as coaches. But once you have the index cards, you just rotate through them, right? So they are, they're not gonna drill every move in wrestling ever, right? There's thousands of wrestling techniques. If 90% of the points comes from 10% of the wrestling, that's where you should live. That's where most of the college, people say college wrestling is boring because all the matches look the same. Well, sure they do. Right? Because there's there's core stance tricks, positioning tricks, down blocking tricks. A lot when you're in when you're when when your stance is here, there's not forty seven ways to take me down. So some of you are trying to drill forty seven ways to score and thirty six of them only work when your opponent is in a big basketball stance. Oh, your opponent did this. Two thirds of your so why even waste time drilling? It if it only works on a on an average kid or someone who's not skilled in wrestling, I'm not drilling it. What we do is this: this is what we do at our 14 day dream season camp. We write down on three pieces of paper. How do I beat Iowa State? It's right there. It's on three pieces of paper. Drill it 900 times. There you go. And we actually invite the parents if they want to come watch the last practice. Put them through the whole camp right before your eyes and blow your freaking mind. 
but that's our that's our plan but we also have 14 days all right so now if i had a beginners group i would not have that's probably 20 percent of wrestling so what we do is you say this you say okay we get the, the half nelson this is how to do referees position you get all that done you drill some drilling on how to get off your back how to pin somebody half nelson half nelson counter the next day you do that again and then you add you know um Two ways to score from a front headlock, double leg, single leg. I would avoid high crotch with beginners. Then Wednesday, you'd have it's a review day. Thursday, you have a review day. And then you add a couple ways to get off bottom. Maybe a couple of secondary attacks like a snap down, maybe a duck under. Underhook throw by has got to be on that list, right? So then you might only have 12 moves in your whole program. Do that. Just stick right there. You get, man, they need to have more. Well, remember your competition we're talking about beginners teams here right when you're in and it inundated with beginners your competition has a drill plan that's 40 times bigger than yours and that's why they don't win because some of these kids they may go weeks without hitting a high crotch crackdown headhunt or a single leg to a quick change off you have 12 techniques. They're hitting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of your techniques. Now, if you're then when, if you're drill, if you feel like your practice time is limited, maybe you're a youth coach. You only get an hour and a half twice a week. So, you know, you might have to go the index card approach where you divide up your practice in two or maybe three. So Monday we do this card, put it on bottom. Thursday we do this card, put it on bottom. Next Monday we go through the third card, put it on bottom. And you say, well, that's not enough drill time. No kidding. You should be practicing six days a week for two hours and 25 minutes. But you can't do that because the school won't let you in there. You're stuck with what you're stuck with, right? So don't ever, don't ever, just always take the under teach over drill method because, you know, Bruce Lee had it all figured out. Now, as a high school coach, once you get your, your, your more exper experienced kids with their practices and you get these kids sort of caught up, then you can combine them by week two, hopefully. And then now you might just have, you know, you might have three index cards. Monday, we drill one. Tuesday, we drill another one. Now, we focus on phase one and two of our, of our uh, foundationwrestling.com series. But... In my more limited academy practices, we just do phase one and the leg riding of phase two. My advanced youth room does all of phase one, all of phase two, right? And then our super advanced high school kids, you know, we actually have some phase three stuff in our like low single leg and different counters, key lock, how to, how to, how to counter a key lock. But remember, I have my kids on the mat once or twice a week year round. So I might be in a different position than you, but my regular academy kids, I only have them on the mat once a week. Not all of them come year round. So I am, I'm worse off than you. You high, school and, you high school coaches who have your kids on the mat six days a week for four and a half months and two or three days a week in the off season, you have a more of an advantage than I do. Yet we have massive success and we're at a disadvantage compared to you. So some people say, well, you're an academy, you have an advantage. No, no, we don't. I have limited that. Our kids aren't on the mat five, six days a week like you high school coaches. Plus, I'll have, I'll have 38 kids. I'll have eight kids that may quit, and I might have four more that show up, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with you? I've got it down to a science. Not even worry about it. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into the who has the advantage or disadvantage. We all have to adjust our tactics. So if you're a middle school coach who has two practices a week, or you're a middle school coach who has five practices a week, and you're um, uh, maybe the middle school coach who has two practices a week, but all but eight of his kids have three or four years of experience, you might have a bigger drill plan than the middle school coach who has practices five days a week, but he's got 57 kids, only one assistant who's never wrestled before, and he's only got seven kids with experience. His practice plan may be less than the guy who only practices twice a week with experienced kids. So when you, when you're especially when you look into our drill routines, it's your job to kind of pick, right? Because my, my system basically is built for the coach. You have, you, have to, you have to use some common sense and say, okay, you know, Nick has seven ways to score from a front headlock. We have to pick two. And I'm like, dude, I'm a high school coach who has a pretty good team. 
my four assistant coaches who have all wrestled in college, they got the beginners. I got their index cards typed out. They've got them in the secondary room because we have two wrestling rooms. Then, you know, my high school team, we, we might have a, a, a bigger drill plan, but I still would stick with the common position philosophy, right? So there's positions that are common to every match. So someone's gonna grab my neck with a collar tie 12 times a match, 600 times this year. During a competition, someone's gonna grab my neck with a collar tie. If I wrestle year round 7,000 times this year, someone's gonna grab a collar tie. You say, I know 14 ways to score from a collar tie. We're gonna do all of those. You're screwing up. Give them three ways to score from when their opponent collar ties and make them drill it 9,000 times this year. And if you only have limited access to your kids, just teach them maybe a, a collar jerk and that's it, right? If you have your, then maybe, you know, who knows, maybe a month in the season, you can go into an elbow pass. But if you keep the under teach over drill program in place, that is the key. I remember talking with um, Nate Carr years ago. He was an Olympic bronze medalist, NCAA champ. He, 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 we were talking at Liberty Nationals, and he's like, man, I've looked at all your stuff. You really got that under teach over drill thing. He goes, I use that all the time. That is fantastic because having these kids on an organized system, they actually get good at stuff. You know, too many coaches, and I found myself doing this sometimes too. We just kind of go too, we teach them too much. Now, when I say it's core, I don't mean basic, right? My varsity team isn't drilling half Nelsons for an hour a day, right? So my idea of basic is probably different than yours, but you know, uh, you can look at mostly phase one and two is where we live. Maybe a little bit more of phase two, maybe a little bit less. All of phase one, we might add some beginner skills in there. I have a lot of beginner kids. So ultimately, if you're uh, a dad who, who can just print off our system, like Stefan did and like, um, you know, uh, Chris Lee did for his boys and some of these other guys, or like I can do with my academy, you can follow the whole system. Beginner, phase one, phase two, phase three. But if you're a coach, you might need to kind of, you know, develop your own index cards and just use a little common sense. Obviously a double leg, single leg, down block, a shuck, a, wrist, uh, a snake, a go behind. Uh, two core tilts, one core cradle on top. Some things are common sense that have to be on there. And then you, Coach A and Coach B may say, man, our index cards look pretty much the same. But based on Nick's system, I actually picked this and this, you know, and we have, we, we focus on this setup more than this one, or we focus on this, this cradle, you pick that one. Who cares? They're both great. If they weren't great, I wouldn't have them on the system because if it won't be Iowa State, it's not on my system, right? The thing is though, is if you start adding seven cradles, you're limiting your kids. So you're both smart as long as you don't try to say, let's combine both of our index card approaches and we'll have a great master schedule. No, because the kids don't get good at anything. So, um, you know, the core techniques have to be in place. You add a couple of auxiliary areas and you say, okay guys, now there's so much more that I would like you to know. Remember, you don't have to beat Penn State. You have to beat the middle school or high school team down the road. Not difficult to do, pretty easy, right? We had 41 state champions last year, and I don't think it's that difficult to do. Not that we'll do it again for some time, but I would tell you in 2017 was our best year ever, and I emailed my parents. It's gonna be six to seven years before we do this again, and it may not happen for longer than that. That was 2017. Boom, 2018, we did even better, right? So, um, these methods work. Okay, but you have to, see there's something here I have on my laptop. It says, avoid the idea fairy. Because I'm always like, oh, I can do that, I can do that, right? You know, you have to avoid the idea fairy, the, the move fairy, right? No, you don't have time with these kids. You know, sure, once they're uh, ranked top 10 in the nation and you have three hours a day, five days a week with them, sure, you can go beyond the core 20% of wrestling and say, we're gonna learn six ways to counter a Russian two-on-one. The kid's like, fine. You know, Kale Sanderson's calling, John Smith's calling me, I'm famous. They can learn so much faster, but still in all, even if those kids are know those, they're not gonna use those very much, right? Because most college matches look the same because everyone focuses on the core areas of wrestling and their positioning. My positioning limits all the, 
30% of the moves out there are stupid and they only work if I'm in crappy position. So just by holding great position, I can exclude the ability for my opponents to drill one third of the wrestling moves, okay? So they're not even an option. So avoid those. And when you look at the, the other next two layers of wrestling, follow my advice and I think you're gonna have great success. Good luck to you. You can always check us out. You can email me, nick at perlerwrestling.com, P-U-R-L-E-R, -E nick at perlerwrestling.com. If I can help in any way developing some of these, I'm eager to do that. Love helping you guys. Uh, obviously, our private team camp, we can come in, do all the dirty work. We can teach your coaches how to coach, your teams, everything. They all get a $220 DVD set. Just got back from Connecticut last week. Uh, you can email me about that as well, and um, I'll send you... Uh, some testimonials. We do about 40 or 50 private team camps a year. Uh, some pretty famous uh, teams around the nation. I won't name drop, but we do. Uh, there's quite a few nationally ranked teams that we have done these for as well. Plus a bunch of up and comer teams. Plus you can use our private team camp as a fundraiser. We've had three teams last year make over 10 grand in one week off of my camp. I get a flat fee, me and my coaches, I fly them out. We do all of it. Uh, and uh, if you wanted to open it up and charge and, 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 and have, you know, uh, open it up to the community. You can do that. Uh, uh, a buddy of mine in Louisiana, Ricky, he made between 11 and 12 grand three years in a row for his team. And that's non That's a nonprofit. So that's profit, you know, because you don't pay taxes since you're a nonprofit organization. So whatever my uh, guys make and, and we make, we have to pay overhead, travel. I pay my coaches, right? Um, and then we pay 40% in taxes. So you're going to make way more than we do. But from a sheer um, uh, money aspect of it, it's a pretty nice way to do uh, a camp for your team and plus to make money for the program, plus to get your team on a system. Now, as far as the fundraiser thing, half the teams don't even do that. They want it just for their team, which is fine. Uh, so anyway, it's usually about $40 a day per wrestler. So super affordable. And... Um, you know, you can email me if you had interest on our private team camps as well. But it's a real shortcut for, for getting your team all on the same page. We'll go out to dinner. I'll share it. You can share your practice plans with me. Pick my brain. 24-hour access. If you have any questions, I'll help you for the next year develop your program. And, uh, you know, we can take the ball and run with it. Love doing it. So there's some good advice. Good luck. You might want to hit the thumbs up. Hit the bell so every time we have a video, you get a notification and uh, you can see more of um, our videos. Uh, thank you for watching.